Welcome, I'm Shannon Soriano Greenwood here today with Paul Castamus, the owner of King of Pops Richmond. So we've known each other for a while. like Three, four years, I think. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. We met at the Martin Agency, uh -huh. I remember. You had your pop stand and I feel like you had like just got started and I was working downtown and took a pop school break on my lunch break. And um, it seems really crazy that that is like how it all began. Yeah. So you started with one cart. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? One cart, just, and then some popsicles. <clears throat> and, you know, looking back at what I was selling back, this was 2012 when I got going, and it was extremely depressing. It's like, you know, thank <laughs> God ignorance is bliss. So I got the second one by the end of that summer because there's markets and there's a lot of stuff going on on Saturdays. So, I felt, well, if I've got one and I can only be at one event, if I, you know, let's get a second cart, I can pay someone to run that and be able to be in more places at once. And that's kind of led me to where I'm at now. We've got 10 carts and a bunch of part-time employees and a couple full-time employees now too. And this space. Yes. That you do pops and sandwiches. Uh-huh. And catering. Exactly. Right. Okay. So it's funny to think about it because you're like, oh, you know, I just was like, get another cart. And then another one, and then another one, and then mm. another one, and then another one. And it's amazing to see how quickly that, like, not intentionally, but just organically grows into this whole thing. So, like, how many people do you have working with you? During the summer, we'll probably have between 20 and 25 part-time employees, mostly high school and college students. And then we've gotten um, two other, or by we, I guess, the, the business here in Richmond, mm -hmm. two other full-time employees, uh, both started off as part-timers with me the first guy we brought in in 2015 full-time doing uh production and wholesale and then last year around this time one of our part-time production workers we offered him a full-time job as being the production manager which we're thankful that he accepted so now he's doing production the other guy who was doing it is doing more operational logistical stuff in addition to the wholesale so we're able to keep I guess including me, three-time people on staff all year, and then having our, our part-timers, you know, they're usually working between April and October. That's amazing. So, okay, tell me what King of Pops is. I mean, I know, but not everybody knows. Uh, so I guess the short version, <laughs> King of Pops is a popsicle company. That's the heart and soul of what we do. Mm -hmm. And what we try to go for is first just making something that's just unbelievable, uh, unbelievably tasting, you know, something where someone has it and they're like, this is incredible. I never thought a popsicle could taste this good. I never thought I'd have a banana pudding popsicle with vanilla wafers in it or something that has cookies in it. So it's really changing what people might think of it. It's, you know, trying to be high quality and really just something fun for, uh, you know, kids, adults, young families, anybody who, who likes to have, you know, some kind of different treat. So our whole, our whole mantra, our whole motto that we've kind of realized is, you know, we want to create unexpected moments of happiness. And, you know, we can do that through, you know, we're showing up at different places, do different events, and people just, you know, get really excited when they see us. And that took some time to, to build, but it, it was always there. Even the first, you know, dozen or more pops, you know, anyone who had it was like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. And it seems like Chocolate the word is Chocolate sea salt is my favorite. It's amazing. It's so good. So whenever I go somewhere and it's like crossed off the board, I'm like, oh. Too late. I was yeah. too late. Uh, that'll happen if, it, if you come later in the shift. I know. If, uh, Can't have. I got to get up earlier. Mm -hmm. get Say to where we I just got go. that milk delivery. Maybe half of that is going to go just the chocolate sea salt. Well, good. Because it's we in demand. It. Yeah. People aren't messing around <laughs> <laughs> with their favorites. No. <laughs> well, something that I love, love, love that you do so well is collaboration. I mean, you work with all kinds of other businesses that maybe aren't always like an intuitive connection. Like, how do you do that? And can you talk about any like really cool collaborations that you're pumped about that you've done recently? Sure. Um, I guess the start, I mean, the ones that kind of make the most sense are working with other food and dessert, I guess, businesses. Mm -hmm. So one of our earlier ones was something with Blanchard's Coffee. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with Lamplighter and Alchemy of just getting their cold brew, making it into a popsicle. We've also worked with Sugar Shack. And I think it's becoming a yearly thing where we're taking their donuts. Uh, we, I guess this is what we did last year, which was amazing. We made a strawberry jelly in-house, got their donuts, cut them into pieces, put them into our popsicle molds, uh, blended up some 
some milk, put it on that, and then just like a spoonful of jelly in each mold. So it's like kind of recreating a jelly donut, but in popsicle form. Uh, Red Eye Cookie Company, we've used their stuff. Shindigs, put mm -hmm. some of their cake in it. Um, Lucille's Bakery. <clears throat> and really anything that's, I guess, that could make sense. There's others that are trying to, you know, something more, I guess, not quite food related. I, you, what was your wording? The uh, non-intuitive. Well, yeah. So the. Did I, say that? I think you did. Yeah. That's which is exactly word. what it is. <laughs> so our we have a yoga event which we started last year, and it was, you know, something to be a fun community event. You know, just kind of bring people out. It's completely free. We give out free popsicles. It's mm -hmm. not something that we're trying to do, as a way to to make sales, but rather let's promote health and fitness and just have like a fun thing yeah. that people come, come out I remember for when you had that idea and you're like, do you know any yoga people? And yeah. you probably thought you were gonna have like, maybe like 20 people come and like do yoga in the park, but that's not what happened. No, we had the first day, I think we had about like 30. And then after that, it just ballooned up to like 150, 200 people every Tuesday. And it was, it was awesome. It was just a cool vibe being, you know, you're outdoors, it's shaded, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of nice tree cover, but uh, Michelle Landon, who, who who leads it, does an awesome job. And I mean, I've, I have no experience in yoga. And what? after like, not You're until not a the, yogi? No, I, I, I dig uh, <laughs> cool things like that. I was like, all right, well, I'm coming out here doing downward dog. I have no clue what Shavasana is, but uh, I'm just That's throwing these, these cool words around. But uh, <laughs> You're so savvy now. Yeah, I am, uh, <laughs> sort of. So it's, it's really fun. We're excited to, you know, do it again. But uh, yeah, people really dug it. It was just, yeah, promote, you know, just health and fitness stuff and mm -hmm. being, you know, doing something fun and cool. Yeah. So you, because you sell popsicles, there's definitely a season and then an off season. Mm -hmm. But you have no chill button. So you don't like <laughs> stop in the off season. Yeah. And I was like so, so impressed this off season when a friend of mine, it lives in North Carolina, messaged me on Facebook and was like, oh my gosh, you have to look up this business that's in Richmond called King of Pops that does Christmas tree delivery. It's amazing. So tell me a little bit about that promotion because that literally is so far from selling popsicles. Yeah. So that is a way to stay seasonal or excuse me, to, to kind of limit the seasonality where our sales, you know, will start to decline mid-October and then by November, December, it's kind of nothing. So in order to, for us to ha keep the staff, do more and just really be a better business, it's, yeah, well, let's do another seasonal business, but seasonal opposite to ours. And that's Christmas tree delivery. So, and what's good about once we kind of figured out our, our motto or mission of creating unexpected moments of happiness, I feel very uh, official that. saying that it's a big, few times, it's but really good. it's kind of, well, well, how else can we do that? How can we provide moments of happiness? And that's, showing up to someone's house with a Christmas tree and dressed as an elf. Like, I mean, I did it, my other guys did it, anyone who was around my part-time staff. So it'd be a team of two, two elves. We'd show up and yeah, deliver Christmas trees and, and, and people really dug it and people So like, really much so it, yeah. that people that don't even live here were like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky you live in Richmond that there's people that will dress like elves and deliver your yeah. tree. That's big time. It was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so what's so cool about you is you will dress up as an elf and deliver Christmas trees, but you are still like this super savvy business person. Like there, it's like this Thank interesting, you. interesting mix. And, and I think people that meet you, they just know like you're just really funny and fun and charismatic and like mm -hmm. don't you take, take yourself too seriously, but you are a very serious business person. And you are very serious about your personal development and business development. I remember the first time you said, do you have any like business books like we can swap? I was like, Paul reads business books? <laughs> I thought he just made popsicles. But can you talk a little bit about how important that you know passion for business development has been in leading you to the growth that you've had with this business? Yeah, I think it's all one and the same because it, it made me realize earlier on that kind of my thirst and desire for learning and, and acquiring new knowledge and different ideas and seeing different viewpoints. You know, I was finding my downtime reading these books on, you know, nonfiction books of business, leadership, management, marketing, because I knew, well, if I can learn something from someone else and then implement it, that's going to help me. That's going to help the business. That's going to help, you know, the community that I'm, that I'm serving. So it's like, that's all what a lot of my downtime is. And it sounds really lame when I'm telling people like, hey, what's your hobbies? Uh, 
Uh, reading books on business, I guess. Or, or first, I just say <laughs> that I, does not I, sound lame to me. Okay, yeah, to, awesome. to the right crowd, it sounds really <laughs> cool. But I'm like, I, I read a lot, and then I just hang out with friends. Like, well, yeah, so does everybody hang out with their friends. Like, no, that's but, not true. I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, yeah. but yeah, it's I, I, I dig, you know, you know, what I've found just overall is that you got to be able to live with two paradoxical or excuse me, live in a paradox where you have two viewpoints that are complete opposite, but they're both equally true. And once you kind of come to grips on that, you start to see things where, you know, you every it's it's easy and you want to kind of see the world in black and white where this is always true. This is never true. Do this, not that. Well, it's all about timing, you know, earlier on. We you know what the things I'm doing now probably didn't make sense for me five years ago. And had I done those things, it probably would have failed. And it'd be easy to say, oh, well, these techniques or these mindsets or ideas are wrong and they don't work. But that's not the case. So you just did it at the wrong time. And right. that's the type of stuff I'm learning. And that's and I'm going back and rereading some stuff and just it's becoming, you know, and when I say it, I guess me mentally managing myself, my, my guys, uh, gals, the company becoming a lot more clear on how things work and that's what I really dig is you know I'm seeking out different ideas and talking to people in completely different industries but it's all it's actually I think very similar um, mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day whether you're selling popsicles or you're selling um, picnic tables or whatever you might be right. you might be doing these concepts or not just business concepts they're economic concepts and then economics is really based in human psychology and I was human behavior. Say, right, they're people concepts. Yeah. Like how do you motivate the team? How do you motivate consumers? How mm -hmm. do you get people to pay attention to what you're doing and get your message in front of them? But and these these books are just g giving me a greater insight of like well, wh how people work, how, why people do the things they do. And it's stuff you kind of already know, but it's like mm -hmm. okay, reading it and know, it's, you know, reading it from like a very smart person. It's like, well, I'm comfortable knowing that it's not just my problem because I think a lot of people operate in a bubble where like, oh, these problems are unique to me mm -hmm. and no one is going through the struggles that I am. Well, actually a lot of people are. And yes. so reading helps me realize that I'm not just doing this alone yes. and that things that I'm encountering are, are actually quite common, which is, makes me less fearful at the beginning. I was like, man, I just suck at everything because I've got all these problems. And I'm like, no, nah, that's, if you know what's common, that's, it's easier to handle. Agree. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was really one of the big motivations for me to start this series because I do know so many business owners that feel that way, mm -hmm. especially when you're starting. <clears throat> like, you feel like I'm the only one struggling with this and I suck because it's not working and really neither of those things are actually true. Yeah. It's just figuring out your system and learning from people that have been there before and not getting like stuck in that woe is me bubble. Uh, absolutely. Because it's easy to do. It really is, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're working independently and you don't always have like the feedback of others to push you forward. Mm -hmm. No amount of money is worth how much I'm working, worth me feeling this way, is nor worth all the stuff that I had been missing out on whether it's you know family dinners or trips or vacations you have to be able to see the future possibilities of what you'll be able to create and you have to put in the support to get you there because right if you burn out before you get there it doesn't matter yeah because <laughs> you're so miserable that you can't enjoy it yeah you have to be rolling and that's no fun for anybody no nah. you're going to get all kinds of advice and none of it's going to be incorrect but it could be wrong for you at the time and the hardest thing is knowing what's right for your situation and for your timing and so